the Elfsteady and the Scotland's at Van Arm, a national league fixture between Aldershot Town and Hartlepool United. And I will run through the Scotland's afternoon's team, starting with our visitors who line up. Number Mike, and they did it really well there, forced pools to go back to to Brad James, who sent it through to the other the opposition goalkeeper. Mitch Walker kicks long. It's cleared away by Sturry. Now picked up by Kinsella, the left back. Kinsella plays it forward. Cast does well to bring it down as Miller was running behind there. And then he finds a ball forward towards Armstrong. Armstrong holds the ball up really well. Does turn back. Goes into Gary Liddle. Liddle can just take his time there. And one thing Armstrong does do so well, despite not probably being that big man that you saw with the likes of Richie Bennett, is that he holds the ball up really well and oh. keeps possession ticking over. With his, with his back to goal as well, he's one of the best I've seen. Um, he almost crouches his body a little bit, makes it very difficult for the def opposition defender to get past. Sterry picks it up in a good position now. Goes inside to Holohan and now fires Ferguson on the left-hand side. He swings a ball into the box. It's awkward, he's bouncing, but it's cleared all the way back to Ferguson. It was well defended, actually. It wasn't Ferguson's best cross, um, but it was, it was really good defending from the number four, Sendles White. ex Crawley Town player. Cass looking for a ball through to Shelton, but only far as Holohan. Holohan drives forward, looks for Shelton on the right hand side. Well intercepted there by Toby Edzer. And he's hit that off his own man. Did actually come off Candy, so it's out for a Hartlepool throw in on the far side. You can see there just the first sort of threat of a counter attack from Oldershot. They're gonna gonna really work that front four hard and, and try and get them get them forwards as much as possible but pools in the ascendancy here now resource on the left hand side gets himself into the box into the byline and looks to put it across it's well blocked there by Kinsella it's out for a Hartlepool corner yeah it was really good defending you know we were talking about it beforehand resource is so difficult when he gets going sometimes he's better when he gets the ball with a little bit more space to run into cross was a little bit half-hearted but Kinsella gets down well to block it Featherston to see at the corner Ferguson goes short and then backs away. Featherston, right footed, one hand in the air. The number eight delivers the ball. The water back post where Dunter's waiting, wins a header over. Dominant force in the box. Four goals a season, a lot of them coming earlier in the season. But it's a good ball and it's a good effort in terms of really? what we usually see from David Ferguson. Absolutely. You can see he's trying to put whip and fizz on it and he's sacrificed a bit of a bit of height and it's good defending. I think it was Panayutu. Um I hope I don't butcher that name too many times. He's done well at the front post and gets a really good header on it. But Pools have a throw in and Shelton picking it up again. And that's out for a corner kick. Three early corners in the opening 10 minutes for Hartley Pools. Still trying to make one of them count. Obviously Johnson with that headed chance that just went over. Yeah, plenty of pressure we've had. We've just no clear cut chances just yet. Like you say, Johnson probably be a bit disappointed that his header was was neither one thing nor the other in the end. But... Plenty of, plenty of players in the box surrounding Mitch Walker on this occasion. Ferguson, one hand in the air as well, takes a corner towards the back post where Johnson's waiting. Johnson's head back towards goal, it's caught by Mitch Walker. Second chance for Johnson in 10 minutes. And Walker is equal to it. But Johnson's certainly being a threat. Yeah, I think that was probably a bit of a training ground routine. I mean, it wasn't the most stylish one, but Johnson and Gary Little were both arriving at the back post. It was Johnson who gets his head to the Ferguson cross. Back across goal, but Mitch Walker comes and claims that he wasn't really under any pressure. But Pools are definitely having the better of this game so far as Oldershot launched one forward, but it sails harmlessly out for a throw in just in front of us. I think David Ferguson just collecting the ball now. Ferguson will take this throw in just below us. Just Ops. some ups to go forwards and long. Just some updates on other results throughout the National League Solihull currently winning 1-0 against Walking and Yeovil currently winning 1-0 against Kings Lynn ball down the right hand side Jermaine Anderson nearly loses out of Shelton but they just managed to clear they look very panicked at the moment the home side well a little bit I mean that was a great bit of defending in the end it was a really good tackle and he's got his teammate Jermaine Anderson out of trouble because I'm not sure what he was trying to do uh, Shelton's done really well first first 10, 10 12 minutes. Uh, his press has been really good and he's won the ball two or three times already. Now Johnson plays a really useful ball down the line to Oates. Oates holds the ball up against his man but then loses out. It's actually good defending there from the captain Sendles White. And he gives it to Miller. Miller then plays it out of the left hand side to Candy. 
Candy up against Cass. Looks to take him on. Gets onto his left foot. Delivers it into the box. Headed away by Johnson. Only as far as Edsa. Now Edsa goes into the right back. Fowler. Now all the shot just enjoying a little bit of possession for the first time in this game. As Edsa picks up the ball again. Now goes into Tanner. Tanner delivers the ball on the outside of his foot. It's a good ball in the box. And James does well to collect it. It was Ricky Miller coming in. who All he needed was to get a toe on the end of it. But James is brave. And James collects. He does really well. You have to say, what a tantalising ball that was from Craig Tanner. Could be wrong. I mean, like I just said, you, you don't really understand the rationale behind the decisions. But it's definitely a, definitely a strange decision. And came out of nowhere. There's a ball forward to Fowler on the right-hand side. And Fowler has got acres of space. Gets himself into the box. And puts it across from Miller. And what a block that is from Gary Liddell. To deny Miller with a continued attack here on the edge of the box. Oh, there's a foul given right well, on the that's edge. that's never a free kick. It was Tanner who picked up the ball, and he almost slipped whilst colliding with Ferguson, and there will be a free kick. It's a dangerous position as well, and uh, Brad James, he's probably only touched the ball, well, he's handled the ball, I think, just once, and he's had a couple of kicks. He will have to be careful with this one. It was great defending just before they take the free kick. Great defending from Gary Ngudawu. Blocked a shot just from outside the six-yard box. And that's what that's why we need him. That's where we've missed him. It was excellent defending and because Poole's got themselves a little bit out of position and it's gonna be it's gonna Craig, Craig Tanner. Tanner, the man who scored at Victoria Park looking to get another one against Hartlepool here. Four man wall of little Cass, Orchin Johnson. Tanner steps up, left footed, good strike, better save. And James denies Tanner from the free kick. And it's out for a corner. Yeah, really good save from Brad James. It's never easy, those ones. Um, you can almost second guess which way to go. Tanner, with his left foot, gets it over the wall and it dips down. Not quite in the corner, but Brad James had to scurry across his goal and makes a good save. It's out for a corner. And that will do his confidence the world of good. And it certainly protects the score line at the minute. Poole's got to follow that up by defending this corner now. Corner ball does come in from the right-hand side. And James is there once again. And he's dropped it. And he's got it back. Probably a little bit lucky there. He stretched with his left arm to grab it. And it fell into him and then bounced off him. Yeah. Uh, it's a good header from Johnson. And yeah, Poole's going short now to Gary Little. I think he's going to go long though. Gary Little does go long towards Oates. And that header's won by Sendles White. Now Kinsella plays a ball forward towards Miller. Seems to be a bit everywhere at the moment. And Little controls and then goes to Sturry. Now Cass looks to play a ball. And there's been a few hopeful... Hopeful balls that really haven't got anywhere, and that's another one back to all the shop. Actually, Hartlepool have won a back here with Gav Hollahan. Hollahan just keeps a hold of the ball, then goes to Johnson. Better. Now out to David Ferguson. He's got Nicky Featherson in front of him. To try to score back to Johnson, but wins the free kick as he just hits that off Tanner. Here we. I think we've gone forward a bit too quickly for my liking. I'd like to see us try and play build from the back, Johnson. Almost makes me eat my words there. It's a good bit of footwork from Johnson. He manages to get past Paniotu. And now Hartlepool have a free kick just past the halfway line. And they might use this opportunity to actually get the ball in the box. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't blame them for going going along here. But they got physical defenders. Uh, Sendles White and Lyons Foster, Foster have, been, um, have been good so far. They've been physical. And Pools have not really had any joy that free kick just going along. short. Liddle plays a 1-2 with Featherston. Now Featherston drives forward and goes into Hollahan. Hollahan keeps a hold of the ball well. Then goes to Ferguson. Now back to Hollahan. Now Featherston. It's really good defending here from all the shot here. We're just keeping their shape. And now there's a ball over the top for Orton. He might get on the end of this. It's a good control. And this might be an unbelievable finish. On his head of the man. Orton's still going for it. It's Walker saves. What a chance for Reese Orton. Brought the ball down, touched it past Walker, clean off the line, hits back off Walker, and then it's into the hands of the goalkeeper, and it should be 1-0. Well, pandemonium, wasn't it? But that's what I was saying. Pools are much better when we build from the back, especially when the old... Paniotu just turning back to Fowler, and we won't repeat the expletive language, but basically tell them that's a rubbish ball, but it's not, that's not a bad ball for Resource down the left-hand side. Resource getting himself into the box, one-on-one -on -one with this man, twisting, turning, and Resource strikes, good save. Walker makes a save, another chance for Resort. Better again from Pools though, wasn't it? Resort. He twisted and he turned, and then he twisted and he turned again. Uh, for a neutral. 
I don't know how many neutrals will be watching. I can't imagine there will be many. But for a neutral, if they're watching on the live stream or listening on BBC T's or here live on Mixler, certainly hasn't been the most interesting thing. But this may get interesting here as Resort is galloping through. Resort gets himself into the box. Over the keeper. To square the hand. Oh, what no! a block off the line. What a defensive block he does from George Fowler. Hollahan cannot believe it. We are denied by George Fowler off the line. And wow, that was heroic. Sometimes you've got to hold your hands up. It looked for all the world as though Oates was going to score. He then dinked it across goal. But that front four, if you like, of Oldershot continuing not to give much space to the pools. Back three, back five, whichever way you want to look at it. Brad James does launch the ball long. 52 minutes gone here. Hartlepool nil. Oldershot nil. It's a flick on from Resort. And Luke Armstrong, left-hand side, getting himself into the box. Held up. Goes on the edge of the box to Resort. Who strikes it. Blocked. And then cleared. An opportunity, Walker collects it, it's an easy one, it's never easy in this weather, but, you know, he probably, it's meat and drink for a goalkeeper like him, 279 appearances for Dover before he came to Oldershot. Cuffs, to Nicky Featherston, now Johnson, just steps forward and goes into Holohan. Sterry frees a bear on this right hand side, he does find out number 23, Sterry gets his head up, looks to deliver the ball, blocked by Kinsella, but only as far as Cass. Positive from Hartley Powell, then Shelton tripped there. Advantage being played as Luke Armstrong picks the ball, strikes it! Oh! Armstrong strikes the top scorer once again, finds the back of the net, and Hartley Powell takes the lead at the EBB. And what a way to strike, Robbie! Well, Armstrong, it doesn't matter how he scores them as long as he scores them for pools. Goals have dried up a little bit in the last couple of months, but he does well. He turns and he hits a really venomous shot. I'm not sure whether it was a deflection or whether it just bounced off Mitch Walker and it nestles into the corner. Hartlepool lead, just thinking that older shot were dropping off a little bit and pung his, pung his foot away, turn his body a little bit. And like you say, it's a 50-50, it's not a penalty. And Poole survive and Cass wins a good header there. And I think what's important to mention, with being 1-0 up, Hartlepool do jump into third. Stockport not playing until tomorrow against Torquay. Yeah, and I think Dave Chandler's has happily admitted now that the title race may be a little bit over for Hartlepool. So I, I think tomorrow a result for Torquay is what we'll be looking for. Absolutely. I think if you said to almost all Pungies, uh even the most optimistic, would you take top three at the beginning of the season? I think most of us would have bitten your hand off, to be totally honest. And yeah, pressure's going to be on Stockport, you have to think. And if you wanted them to play a pressure game, it'd probably be against Torquay. Kinsella goes past Shelton, then delivers the ball towards the back post. It's a good ball. Headed away by Gary Little, but only as far as Hines who strikes it. Blocked by Ferguson. And then Featherston just clears it further. Oates then somehow gives away a free kick. It was a 50-50, but I'm not sure he's giving it all the shots away. He, 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 he sort of picks and chooses with these 50-50s, really. And on this occasion, I thought Oates might have been being fouled, but referee disagrees with me. Here's Kinsella. Seen a lot of the ball for the men in red and blue. Featherston looking to go around the corner, but blocked by Anderson Bonnie as far as Holohan. And now Holohan sent a ball oh, forward and sent Resort on his bike. Great pace. Resort brings it under control. Gets himself into the box. Well challenged, but Resort picks it up on the edge. Resort still going. Strikes it with his oh, left foot. Oh, no. Balance. And it's all there. He had the forward one of Shelton and Armstrong, but chose to go himself. And it's almost a very tired shot from Resort. He looks a bit tired, doesn't he, Resort? He's, he's, he's continued to huff and puff. He's caused a few problems. Maybe he should have had a penalty in the first half. Looked like he was going to get in behind. It looked like for all the world he was going to get in behind. Whether it's a little bit of moisture in the surface that just held him up. And then he, I thought he was going to give the ball across to Armstrong. He opted not to. I thought that was because Shelton's made a long busting run on the opposite side, the side closest to us. He thought he was going to play him in. Oates once again decided not to. He shot with his left foot. And I think before he even made contact with the ball, you could tell he wasn't going to score. You're right, Alex. It was a tired shot. Leaning back with his weaker foot. An older shot coming forwards again now. It's a powerful play as well. He's done really well. The older shot managed to get forward and he's won himself a free kick. It was Candy who almost skipped past Featherston and Johnson and then goes down and wins a free kick 30 yards out, quite central. Toby Edzer stands over the ball. Probably too far out for a shot. You'd certainly think so. It's a good point you made just quickly about um, Edzer. We haven't seen really anything of him in this second half, and I think that's a telltale sign that Pools have been able to 
getting the ascendancy in this second half far more because he was really dictating the play for the shots in the first half. Sutton have gone in front at Maidenhead. 1-0, the breakthrough for, at the moment now, the league leaders. Adjaboy with the goal. Ball comes into the box. And it's over everyone. And thankfully for Pools, it is a goal kick. Well, we've seen some strange free kicks. We saw one strange one from Hartlepool. And we've seen one there from Craig Tanner, who had a really good game in the first half. And he did put one brilliant delivery in with the outside of his boot. But he sort of walked up to that very nonchalantly and poked it forward with the outside of his foot. And eventually... The ball goes out for a Hartlepool goal kick and it would have been very difficult for the older shot head to threaten the goal. I've not seen many free kicks like that, I have to say. Hollahan doing well again here. Hollahan plays out the left-hand side to Orton. This is an opportunity here. It's 4v4. Resort delivers the ball in the box. Oh, no! no! Two yards out. Luke Armstrong, oh, I'm not sure no! if he's got a touch or not, but it's wide. Shelton flew in as well and none of them could get a touch and Hartlepool should be 2-0 up. Well, Research didn't look tired there, did he? He did brilliantly. And you could see Pools had four men in the box and looked for all the world. As the ball flashed across goal, that it was going to be a goal. Similar to what Candy was doing. Candy didn't really affect the game too much. There's a ball down the line and Research is stretching them legs again. Armstrong in the box. Come Resource, on, Reece. Gordon into the box. Research strikes it! Oh, oh no! Reece Ort should have killed the game off. He had the option of Armstrong, who was being tracked well back by Kinsella. Or went himself looking for the far corner. It's wide of the mark. And this game should be wrapped up in bed and fast asleep. Well, Pools have had plenty of joy, actually, in the second half. The ball skidding on. It's very difficult to defend against. Reese Oates himself is difficult to defend against. Finds room in those channels again. He cuts inside. He shapes his body nicely. Aim for the far corner. You could see what he was going to do. Actually, I think he was... Fairly well wide of the post. Like Alex said there, there was a, he could have used Armstrong as well, and he didn't. Will Pools live to regret that? Well, we certainly hope not. And Reece Oates, Reece again, a very similar position. Another chance. Get himself into the box. He's wanting to go on his right foot. He passed it this time on the edge of the box to Hollahan, who has to take a touch. Takes him a little bit wide. Hollahan, back heel to Sturry. Sturry just keeps a hold of the ball. Then goes into Shelton. Shelton found himself in the box. Shelton can strike it. He puts it across for Armstrong. Oh, no! Off the line, now Featherston, left foot, right footed, strikes it, oh, no! it in. This can't... is incredible! I can't believe what I'm watching, I cannot believe what I'm watching. Featherson's incredible, incredible, off the line once, then Featherston shot his foot, Pulse continuing to apply pressure here. And I think we're going to catch our breath, but it's a free kick for Hartlepool, referee goes who... to his pocket as well, but... Whose shot was cleared off the line there, Robbie? I'm, it's just... It was a Hollahan? Was Hollahan off the line? It was Hollahan off the line. It was Hollahan off the line. Then it was Featherston, who did really well. Twist and turn, shoots from the edge of the box, and that was blocked. So we've had two off the line now. Heart in mouth for everyone, I think. You have to say it's great defending, last-ditch defending. Look for all the world as though he was going to score, though. We will have a free kick, though. We will have a free kick in we the will. Atta in attacking position here. I think it was Tanner that went into the book there. Not quite sure. Uh, we'll have a free kick over on that not far 100 side. Not 100% sure, but... Person's got one hand in the, in the air. Everyone forward apart from Sturry and Cass here. <laughs> Featherston with his arm in the air. Pulls plenty of men forwards. Nicky Featherston delivers the ball. Good ball in the box towards the header by yes! Yes! Resort gets his goal! There we go! Not tired anymore! Resort's fantastic here! He deserves that! Resort has huffed and puffed, but he hasn't given up and he's defined the never say die attitude and he puts Hartlepool 2 0 up! Well, it was a great delivery. It was Nicky Featherston this time. He had his hand in the air. You could see he was going to take it and it was a really, really good delivery into the six yard box back post. Reece Oates, he just glances it into the corner. No chance on this occasion for Mitch Walker in the older shot goal. A little bit more and of an intense warm-up. Hartlepool come forward again. He in Shelton. Little goes the right-hand side to Sturry. Armstrong and Orton in the box. Sturry takes a touch on his right foot. Gets the byline, strikes it. Save. save. Good save. Walker saves his nice Sturry. So looking for his first goal of the season. It's a good save from the goalkeeper. You got it. Good turn from Oldershot here, Kinsella. He's still going here, he's got himself into the box. He's looking for a goal across, handball, penalty! Penalty to Oldershot. And I think that is a penalty, I have 85 to say. minutes gone, I'm not sure whose hand has hit off. Do you think it's Ryan Johnson? 
think it's Ryan Johnson. It was it was good play um, from Kinsella initially, who turned away from, I think, Featherston, who was marking him in midfield. Uh, and the ball then comes back, pulled back. It was a little bit of a tame ball. I think Johnson, it's one of those, comes at him from quite close range, and he just panics, sticks his arm out. And Mo Betema now has the chance to bring Oldershot right back into this game. Betema yep. steps up. Quite a long run up. Brad James on his debut. Can he seal what has been a great second half performance with a save here? The substitute, Mo Betema, touches the ball. Oldershot dug out, hands on head. Mo Betema steps up, right footed, scores, top corner, great penalty, and Oldershot pull one back. And here, 86 minutes gone. It's going to be a nervy few minutes as all shot one pills two. Yeah, it's a great penalty. I don't think we can have any complaints for that fantastic goal line block, wasn't it? Zane Francis Angol has the ball in the corner. He's just going to hold it. We find a good ball there. Elliot, Elliot's got himself into the box. Now at the edge of Donaldson, who leaves it for Holohan. And Holohan is a penalty! It's going to be penalty! It is a penalty! Oh, well, as you might be able to tell, I cannot control my excitement. And it's all going off now. It's not happening. No one can control their excitement on the field of play either. It's a rock in there! Lots of shirts being pulled, lots of angry words being exchanged, I'm sure. It's very difficult who t to tell who was at the heart of that. One thing we do know is it is a penalty for Pools. And I think in doing this, Oldershot probably wasting their own time. The referee is going to calm things down. Nicky Featherston has the ball on the spot, he's ready. Yeah, he doesn't want any distractions, but it's going to be a little bit of a wait. I think it's Hongahan. Yeah, Hongahan's going to go into the referee's book, as well as an unidentified Oldershot player at the moment. And look, the penalty, you have to say, I think it was Reese Oates there who shaped to shoot, and he didn't really have any room to shoot, and the reason he didn't really have any room to shoot is because his heel was clipped. And we're just getting ready now, the referee coming over, Hongahan, did we see how many additional minutes for Adidon? Still on? arguing. Four minutes were added on just before that penalty. Nicky Featherston has stepped up, everything's calmed down now. Four minutes added on, but you're feeling as though if Featherston can bury this, then that's going to be the game for Pools. Nicky Featherston looking for his fifth goal of the season, and to seal the tie for Hartley Pool. Our captain, our leader, the man who's led us throughout this season, ever influential. And the referee, the referee's not happy, he thinks that the ball is not on the spot. He did the same with Betema's penalty. Seems somewhat particular, but I suppose the rule book is the rule book. Nicky Featherston does re reposition the ball. Steps up. Long run up. Nicky Featherston. Right footed. Strikes. 3 oh! one. Nicky Featherston never in doubt. And surely now that is three points for Hartlepool United here at the EBB Stadium. It's all the shot one, Hartlepool three. That should really do it for Pools. Three of the best in this second half. In what's been a pretty strong second half performance, we had our hearts in our mouths for a few minutes. Imagine he'll be heart in mouth. He lives and breathes Pools, as you guys all know. He'll be very, very nervous, I'm sure. And there he won't be nervous is anymore. the full-time whistle. Hartlepool, Convent, assured and have sealed it here at the EBB Stadium. 3-1 and ends. We don't give up. We never say die. Two big games to go in the National League and we keep on marching.